Hello, everyone. Good morning. Welcome to the fourth and final day of Amaze. I'm here with coffee and croissants and Caro. Wow, what a day was it yesterday, yeah? We had so many talks, panels, amazing speakers, and of course, the awards. Um, congratulations to all award winners, but also all nominees and everyone who submitted. You all rock, basically. So, yay! So, today, I have Kao with me for Coffee and Croissants. Welcome, Kao. Hello. How are you doing today? <laughs> I'm doing pretty well, thanks. How are yeah. you? Uh, a little bit tired, but uh, yeah, I was working on something together with Nomi for tonight uh, until like four o'clock or something, but uh, uh, <laughs> that's gonna, <laughs> it's gonna be fine. And uh, yeah. Um, do you uh, actually have croissants with you? No, but I have these corn snacks. They Ooh, look like corn snacks. Giant teeth. Teeth, yeah. Hmm. And they're really <laughs> loud, so maybe I shouldn't eat, eat them. On yeah. So t uh, so today instead of croissants, I brought these. <laughs> I know. <laughs> It's uh, sugar breads, basically. Um, oh. I uh, uh, with a little bit of butter. Um, yeah, Did I didn't have any croissants anymore. Hmm? Did you bake those? No, it's a uh, it's a, a delicacy or a treat in the Netherlands, but I just eat it for breakfast. <laughs> oh, and my, uh, my croissants were finished. So, thanks. Yeah, it's a uh, it's not really great healthy or something. But it's delicious, so. <laughs> but I think the corn snakes are better for you, so uh, keep on doing that. Um, Wait, you're not, yeah. you're not, you're not putting those chocolate sprinkles on your toast? Well, this is sugar bread, so chocolate sprinkles on that, I mean, I guess you could do that, but it's also, I never thought about that, actually. I mean, chocolate sprinkles, I never eat them, actually. But that's like a Dutch thing, I feel like. That's where I saw it the first time. I know. Yes, I will bring it also with me if I travel. If I travel, like when we used to travel, I would go to places and then bring chocolate sprinkles and stroopwafels. Um, oh, but yeah. uh, apparently, stroopwafels you can buy anywhere now these days, and chocolate sprinkles. Yeah, but I don't basically eat any of those. Is there anything? So you're in Japan at the moment. Is there anything you would bring? To Japan, actually, from the states where you were originally based. Like, is there yeah, something I, that you miss, miss now that you're in uh, in Japan? Yeah, I like mix miss bagels and like New York food like that. But you know, Japanese food is really good. So mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, this is why I was asking if you're missing anything from uh, from the states, or that like there's so many st much stuff in uh, in Japan. Like, what is the most delicious thing in Japan actually for you? Like, what do you like the best? I mean, the the fish is like amazing, and yeah, it's just you know Japanese meals are like have a lot of little dishes and stuff like that, and yeah, if if I'm able to eat something like that or make something like that then I'm pretty happy um, but yeah there's there's a lot of good food here without a doubt you uh, bef you're now in Tokyo but before you were in Osaka right and mm -hmm. isn't that the this is that the like is it called street food um, is that the best over in Osaka Osaka or what was that again oh there's we there's talked a lot of this before yeah, there's a lot of like, um, like casual foods, basically. Um, I guess there's also street foods. Well, there's street foods in Tokyo too, but um, there's just different kind of foods, I guess, are sort of the specialty. There's certain specialties in Osaka. Like, um, there's like these... Um, there's an okonomiyaki, which is like mm. uh, vegetable pancakes. Yes, really so good. delicious. <laughs> Love them. I love okonomiyaki. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, okay. 
yeah, there's a, there's a lot of good food there too. Um, yeah, it, it's pretty cool to be, you know, in the States, I would always be looking for like Japanese food and stuff. But when you're in Japan, the search is over. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I remember uh, that when when I was uh, in New York visiting you, that um, that you brought me to uh, to all these um, shops where I could buy uh, Japanese food ingredients, so I could take it home with me and make some delicious food. So I'm still grateful for that. So thank you for introducing me there. Um, but uh, before we actually go more into food, because I feel like food is a theme in in, in Amaze, because we've got lots of uh, cooking stuff also today yeah. in uh, in uh, in the stream. But uh, before all of that, could you tell a little bit more about yourself? For people sure. Are watching. Um, sure. Uh, uh, I make uh, digital, physical multiplayer games that are played in public spaces um and i like building um like custom interfaces for those kind of games uh they're games that are mostly played at like festivals and art galleries and things like that and in other sort of events um and yeah so it's like you know how I got to know Zoe in the first place. And um, those are the kind of games that I've been making um, and sort of, you know, in, in the space of media art um, mostly. And uh, I've uh, been lucky enough to teach a lot of the, uh, a lot of the things that I make and a lot of the techniques that I use um in like after school programs and um, workshops and then also in uh at universities um and so it's all kind of based on my practice uh, and uh yeah and i am still continuing with that um and I, right now I've been consulting um, in theme parks uh, and, you know, consulting uh, live games and things like that or play that uh, people uh, can experience um, and, and sort of exploring that area. Um, and yeah, it's just I've kind of change the environment that I'm in uh, by moving to Japan and sort of, you know, getting used to things and sort of, um, I think the pandemic was like, kind of put a wrench in things um, in a way. Uh, but yeah, like, you know, in terms of like going out and meeting people and like going to events and stuff, uh, and seeing what's out there. Um, and so I feel like I still have to do that. Um, so I'm just waiting for things to get safer um, right now. But yeah, that's what I've been doing. Mm -hmm. when, when did you move to uh, Japan actually? In 2018? 2018. Oh, that's already... I feel it's like, like you were in New, New York like uh, last year, but that's with everything. Like everything feels like it was last year. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The time has somehow been warped. But yeah, it's been a little while. But at the same time, I just feel like with with everything and the, with the isolation and stuff, it's just it's not like full immersion into the actual place where I am, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so. And uh, yeah, and now you also moved to Tokyo. So that's another place where you need to embed yourself, basically. But uh, um, yeah, is um, how is Tokyo so far, actually? Like, like what's the weather like, actually, at the moment? Because here it, it, it's like 6 p.m. now in, um, in Tokyo, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's cooling down for the day, but it, the high right. was like 30, 34. 
Mm. I don't even yeah. know what that is in Fahrenheit, but I know that it's really hot. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, and um, what's what's uh, like what season is it now actually in Japan? It's like mid mid uh, summer. It's like okay. the hottest hottest time of the year. Like the rainy mm -hmm. season just ended, and it's like super hot. Um, the Olympics started. Um, and yes, so, that's in Tokyo. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but um, but yeah, it's uh, that's happening right now here. <laughs> I'm just trying to stay indoors, you know. Yes. <laughs> I mean, I'm also still trying to stay indoors, but there's like there's not such a major sports events going on, so I cannot imagine how that is. Um, yeah, to be in a city like that now, at this moment. Um, yeah. Yeah. So please stay safe. Thank um, you. Yeah. So, um, when did we first meet? Actually, was this? Play for 20... Arts Festival. Play for Arts Festival. So that was 2012, the first time actually. Yeah. We met at what the the train station. <laughs> you came yes, to... I remember this so vividly as if it was like yesterday. <laughs> Me, too. <laughs> Me too. Can you tell a little bit more about this first? Uh, <laughs> well, um, first of all, you invited me to come to the to the playful arts festival it was really i was really excited um and to be a part of that and i love the fact that it was you know art and games the crossover of art and games um where i felt like there wasn't a lot of that at the time uh so super exciting to to even be a part of an event like that um and uh, so I went to, I, I guess you picked me up in Amsterdam, right at the at the train station? Or no, the no, airport, I think train, I, the airport really? train Did station. I, okay. Oh, right. And then we went with the train to uh, Den Bosch, which is like a little yeah. city in the south of the Netherlands, um, uh -huh. where we put on the festival. And then what happened then? <laughs> It was amazing. I I had pretty bad jet lag, so I was trying to stay awake. But um, but yeah, I just like set up my game, met everybody, played a bunch of games. Oh my god, the lineup was like amazing, um, and it was just like all the kind of games that I like, the multiplayer, you know, games, you know, like things that are digital and physical, uh, or and or physical i guess and then um so amazing and then uh so i just i had fun showing my game but i also had so much fun just like playing games and hanging out with people um and then i remember the mayor came to play the game or the councilman sorry yeah alderman or something yes the, I, I still show that picture everywhere because it's such a um yeah, it's such a good I know, visual of, of your work also because it brings, it connects people in different ways, I guess. <laughs> because like what we showed, so uh, I run Playful Arts Festival in the Netherlands and uh, back then we had the, uh, the theme of collaborative play. Um, so we didn't want to focus on competition, but then of course there's also some competition in there and we had we invited Kaho as a very very special guest uh, the the only international guest that we had uh, to um, uh, show Hit Me and um, can you tell a little bit more about Hit Me? Um, yeah it's uh, it's a two person game where you hit try to hit uh, each person has a hat on with a box on top of it and the box has a wireless video camera and a, um, it's basically a hack doorbell system that's connected to a push button and then each each player tries to hit the other player's box button um, and when they do 
their own camera takes a photograph and if you have your opponent in in the photograph then you get bonus points um and so basically the photograph gets um projected onto a wall so that the spectators can sort of see what's going on um and then there's a judge who judges so each person gets a point for the hit and then bonus points if their opponent is in the photograph <laughs> and then um and, and sometimes it can be a really intense game uh, and you know people start like back to back and then there's kind of really hyper music that's happening throughout the game and um you know it's really, it's it's basically a game that um i made because i wanted to show that you know these kind of games these kind of physical games with uh with digital uh interfaces or like uh interfaces that use technology um can be really intense just as intense as like a fight fighting game like street fight or something that you might play um and so that was the whole purpose of of that game and so you know you expect people to kind of bump into each other or maybe end up like um sort of aggressively trying to hit the other person's button um or people just like sort of ducking under out of the way and so there's a lot of like physical potential and a lot of you know infinite number of ways that people can play it um and so it's like it's even though i run the game and i'm and i made it it's kind of fun for me to watch <laughs> Because like people have different styles of playing, and you know, and the it's also interesting like how people people's pre existing relationships sort of manifest themselves in during the game. So like mm -hmm. you know, there are people who are um, you know they're friends who who know each other really well. So maybe they'll be like really you know really aggressive with each other or like siblings who will be who are okay with being aggressive with each other but then there's people who are just um really reserved and and sort of like you know are laughing through the whole thing and maybe not being as you know active um and and you know there's just different ways of enjoying it um and you know it gives a lot of freedom and agency to the players in that way i think um but I think that that's one of the most exciting things about these kind of public multiplayer games. Um, uh, the physical ones is like there's so many choices, right? Like you're not you're not talking about um, using a you know a traditional game controller to make your move. So it's not like um, one of the the a triangle button or the A button or whatever that you might press. It's like the the way you you know slap a button or it's the you know it's the angle in which you approach the button that you're slapping or something it's there's just infinite number of ways of like achieving the objective of the game um and so the, those kind of things are always like really interesting to me um yeah so Sorry, that was a really oh, yeah. long ex no, explanation. No, that's great. No, that's great. I guess like with the with Hit Me, it's also because it's like with the Play for Arts Festival, we try to bring people from outside of games also to to experience playfulness and uh, you know get them out of their bubble of seriousness and then just uh, yeah play together and also have different pe different hierarchies of people playing things together so that they m be on the same level or not or the hierarchy is different all of a sudden. So we had this alderman playing with the festival, another festival director, curator, um, and the dynamic shifted, right? So they were all of a sudden, it was not this official, spe very special person, but it was just an opponent that they need to push a button on the top of their heads uh, and in whatever way they perceived was 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 okay, right? So it, it yeah, it made people playful and also uh, because of the a little bit of the silliness of a giant button on top of a helmet that they never wear in, or normally also. So that makes it also for spectacle fun for audiences, but also 
fun for themselves and it allows them to do something else than they would normally do. So I really appreciate that in, in your work uh, and uh, to bring that to people. So I'm still happy that we got to bring you, had the honor of bringing you to the Netherlands issue. Oh my God, and, uh, I was, I was <laughs> honored to be there. It was amazing. I loved it. And Hit Me also got into the uh, Design Play Disrupt uh, in the v and Museum, right? The exhibition. Yeah. As, a, as an object for people to, to know about. Yeah, the, the, the process and the tech behind it. Um, there was like a, a, a sample version of it, like a dem demonstration version of it set up. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, the demonstration itself wasn't wasn't like the actual no. physical game, but um, but it just showed like you know because it it's just like the cheapest construction helmet that I could find <laughs> and like a a, a hacked um, General Electric wireless doorbell system um, yeah. and and things like that and like the Arduino. Um, mm -hmm. And so, you know, you, you can take these like low cost things and kind of hobble them together and make these things. I think at the time when I first made it, it was like 2005 and I used like a basic stamp because this, this is pre-Arduino days. But um, the basic stamp is actually uh, expensive at the time, but um, the wireless components would be super expensive yeah. and so that's why i so use the, should the I, doorbell so if i'm, um, I think I'm going to start like 20 without US screen sharing dollars, and show some stuff uh, in real life and then i'm going to move into screen sharing and <laughs> can let you know how that's, that's looking yeah so it's super cool like how you use all of those kind of uh, technology that it's not meant oh, sorry, for these sorry, things but you hack them into something super cool i think we can talk about this for hours i could talk with you for hours about these kind of subjects but um we have another whole program for today. So I want to quickly ask you, like, did you uh, look at the program? Did you, uh, for today, did you see anything that like caught your eye? Yeah, I, I actually um, was really interested in the, in the wire art workshop, but it got canceled, sadly. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. But so I, and was, I hope uh, to do that one day because it, yeah. it looks amazing. Yeah. I, I love the whole like at the end you play everything together um, and you know I, I, I love those kind of um, I don't know the, the sort of performance at the end that you do with everybody the collaborative performance at the end mm -hmm. I think it's brilliant. Yeah, they uh, they were gonna do uh, this afternoon African robots and spacecraft with Louis Kaluzi and uh, Ralph Borland. And I, you should definitely, everyone should definitely check out the the wire art. Um, and I hope we can do the workshop at some point in the future because, uh, yeah, like you said, Kyle, it's it's I think it's super interesting and uh, yeah, I would really love to to do it myself as well. So. Uh, hopefully, maybe next year in physical amaze <laughs> that we can do with like yes. for reals also. That would be great. Physical festival. <laughs> I miss them so much. Yes, same. I mean, I put like a parent spray in the background just so I felt like I was a little bit in the physical space. <laughs> But yeah, so, but like, uh, we're gonna, after this, there's gonna be a talk about spacecraft arcades and log versus digital wireframe. So there's gonna uh, be a talk about it. We have some arcade stuff today. Um, so uh, for a spacecraft arcade, then we've got Arcade Argentinos, DIY arcade scene of Argentina. That's gonna be interesting. I'm gonna interview Henan um, with some footage. And yeah, that's gonna be exciting. And then we've got Phoebe Watson, uh, talking about indigenous culture in games and then we have a little bit of cooking a little cooking block so we're gonna have uh, Jay Palmer making garlic noodles um, mm. and uh, Forreston is gonna interview Jay about the work and then after that we have uh, a song to commemorate that really good ramen I made by Maze 
uh, from Australia. And then, uh, yeah, and then also some uh, cool dipping coat, Kitchen of Hues uh, by Kofi Aga in the street show. It's gonna be cool. And Caribbean Spice, we're gonna have uh, people from Jamaica and in the Caribbean talk about their community and their work, which so is awesome. Cool. Uh, something in Minecraft and the gallery and then at the end of this day we have got 10 years of a maze quiz and people can sign up for that uh, to be in the zoom call to do the quiz with us together but everyone can do it also from home and it's going to be very exciting um, yeah Kaho thank you so much for joining everyone look up uh, what's your website kahoabe.net kahoabe.net yeah. Yes. So everyone look uh, Kao up. She makes amazing work. Definitely. If you need some alt controller stuff and everything, you should definitely uh, talk with Kaho. So Kaho, have a wonderful evening in Tokyo. Thank you so much. Everyone else, uh, have a wonderful festival and a maze. And I'll see you later today as well. So thank you, everyone. Bye, Zoe.